to breathe. You and how desperately we need to be for your touch. But rain in us, God, fall fresh again. Come search our hearts and purify.
thank you so much, Lord. You are the Holy One. You are the one that um, is the giver of life, Lord, and you are all powerful, and we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for just the grace you have given to us, Lord. We thank you for just making a way, Lord, um, to just redeem us from our sins, Lord. We thank you that you loved us and that you are good, Lord, and that you um, seek to draw us towards you, Lord. I just pray that we would be sensitive to that call, Lord, and that we would just be obedient to you, Lord. I just pray for um, for this uh, upcoming time, Lord, that you would just um, give your speaker your words, Lord, and um, just help us to just have open ears and open hearts to hear what you have for us right now, Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, just going to All right. Um, you know, as I was praying about the message, and uh, I don't want it to just. I prepare a message, of course, but I, I don't want it to say what I prepare, or what I want it to say, but um, I pray that the Lord will lead us uh, in this uh, time um, as we um, have a um, few minutes before the dinner. Um, so as Pastor Oscar was talking in the morning about, about the connection with the Lord and how we fix our eyes on the Lord and our identity coming from not from ourself, what we believe in ourselves or the situation around us from outside, but it's from the Lord. And God actually uh, lead me to uh, think about um, uh, a person that application, you know, um, a personal um, application. And I, uh, as we got the theory, I, as we get the information this morning, I want to just apply it in, in a person. And I couldn't find a um, better one than Simon, Simon Peter. So uh, that's what I'm going. So if I ask you, uh, I know this is the time that we're going to sleep. So I wanted to ask you, uh, what, if you think about Simon Peter, what's, just give me one word. I wanted to hear one word about Simon Peter. There's a lot of things about him. But just one word that stick in your mind about Peter. Okay. <laughs> You see, everyone has something about Peter, you know, Simon. Okay, so l let us uh, be just in, in order so we can hear each one. Bold. Bold, yes. Okay. Uh, bold, uh, not bold. No. Okay. <laughs> just, uh, okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, next. What do you think? I said stubborn. Stubborn, okay. Uh, reckless. Reckless. Rock. Rock. Eccentric. Se <laughs> what? Eccentric. Eccentric. How you speak. 
fast to speak. Coward. Coward. <laughs> oh, loyal? Uh, loyal. Oh. Loyal. 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 Okay. Okay, what else? The rock. But do you think he's the rock or uh, he's, a, he's a stone of the rock? Okay, so we're going to get into that. Uh, what else? Genuine. I love it. Genuine. Okay, what else? Faithful. You know, I, as I uh, was studying the, the story, his life, you know, we pinpoint on Peter a lot of times. But I don't think any one of the disciples did what he did. I think all of them, they wanted to do what he wanted, what he did but they couldn't do it. So let us see how Jesus saw him first time and what did Jesus call him. Let us open uh, uh, John when uh, John when the first time that Jesus met uh, Simon and uh, John 140 please. If we can get the verses um, just 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 in Jason will help us with the, uh, I don't have the Bible, the English, so I, I'm going to depend on you guys. So open your Bible and that's okay. Uh, you can read uh, John 1, um, you know, 40. So, you know, the first time uh, we get to hear about Peter Simon that we get to know that he's a brother. He has a brother. His name is Andrew. And um, one of the two who heard John speak, John the Baptist, and followed him was Andrew and also Simon Peter's brother. So he was kind of the disciple or followers of um, John the Baptist. Next verse, please. Then he first found his own brother, Simon, that's Andrew, and said to him, to, si to uh, Simon, we have found the Messiah. Messiah means Christ, means the, the one who's going to save, the Savior. We found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. He's not like anyone. He, he is the Messiah. That all the prophecy, all the expectation, all the, what we are looking for, and all what John the Baptist pointing to, we found him. He's Jesus. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. Next verse. So, so Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. And now when Jesus looked at, this is the first, first what we called first what? Impression or first encounter. Never met Jesus before. First time Jesus looked at him, at, at Simon. Looked at Simon, you're Simon, okay, hello. How are you? No, he didn't say hi. Or he didn't say, how are you? But what he say, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. How did you know my name, you know? No one introduced him to Jesus, but he knew him right away. He knew his name. He and his father also, and then he changed his name. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. That's Peter, stone. You know, in this encounter, the first encounter, um, you know, by the way, the meaning of anybody knows what's the meaning of Simon. We know Peter is the stone, but what's the Simon? Yeah, hears or listener. 
I think Jesus changed his name because of that. He's not a listener. <laughs> he doesn't listen. He just speaks, you know. He, he has, I think he has two mouths or three mouths. <laughs> so he's outspeaker, outspoken. You know, he doesn't let, he, but, so he changes my, I change his name and say, you are Simon. Another thing I think he, he told him from the first encounter, I see something in you that no one see it. Not even yourself. Maybe you see yourself weak, maybe you see emotional, you know exactly uh, how do you feel with your failure. You know how maybe, uh, you are so frustrated of yourself, of your, and I know you. I know you, but I know you not from outside, but I know you from inside. And I wanted to change you. And we have journey, we are going to move together, we are going to have a baby steps together toward that goal. That's the first encounter. That's a first encounter. And this is spoke to me a lot because, you know, we judge ourselves, judge our others according to what we wear, what we have, what we, uh, from which uh, family we are. But when Jesus look at us, look at inside us, and he sees something in you that maybe you don't believe in yourself, but Jesus believe in you. And he wanted to change you. He wanted to make you, instead of uh, standing in the sand, changing. You know, uh, Peter Simon is, is like from the top to the bottom. You know, his emotions going up and down, up and down. One time he say, you are the son of God or son of uh, living God. Next time he took Jesus aside and rebuked him and say, it's not going to happen that you will go to the cross. And Jesus look at him and say, get away. This is an idea from Satan. This is the counseling from Satan, not from God. You see, one time he received the revelation from God. Next point, he is listening to the sound of or the uh, idea of Satan to avoid the cross and think that there will be a crown without a cross. And Jesus rebuked him and he was so harsh on him on that point. So this is, this is Peter going from up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And the Lord wanted to tell him, I wanted to change you, I wanted to make you you are Peter. I'm going to change you from Simon to Peter. And as we got together in this conference, I think the Lord wanted to change, wanted to transform. One doing, you know, going with frustration and failures, but the Lord today wanted to encourage you, wanted to give you a word of revelation. In... Uh, in Luke 5, um, the, the second encounter of Simon with the Lord, um, at the point of failure also, you know, Luke 5 and um, chapter 1 and verse 1, when, when the Lord um, brought him to Jesus, now, um, no, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 4, I'm sorry, Luke 5, Luke 5. And, um, you know, with frustration that they didn't catch um, any uh, fish, and they came with all of this, you know, failure um, for the things that they know that they are good in it. Next verse, please. They are good in it. Next verse, please. And then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and told the multitude from the boat. Next verse, please. And then he had stopped, uh, you know, speaking. He said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for 
catch. You see, he's, um, he's coming, but he, he end up not able to catch one fish. So the Lord asked him to, for directions and say, go out into the deep and let down your net for catch. Maybe the Lord today wanted to um, challenge you to do something different, to go deep to go deep, to maybe go in different direction that you used to go in it, and trust and obey the Lord. Maybe you try yourself and you fail, but now the Lord asking you to do something different and go in different direction. Next verse, please. But Simon answered and said, Master, we have toiled all the night and caught nothing. We fell. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Can you trust God's word? Can you trust his, his um, uh, wisdom down aside and trust God's direction? So what he did next time, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. See what Simon did. Next verse, please. So they, um, their partners, and they came and filled both the boats. Next verse, please. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Oh, Lord. You see, God took him baby steps, tell him, to recognize that he needs a savior. He's a sinner. You know, I don't deserve all of that, Lord. You know, I, you are, you are amazing me with all of that. He, he pushed, we go to um, Matthew 14. Let us go to Mar Matthew 14's next, uh, you know, encounter with the Lord that he, he is taking from one point to another um, in verse 22 and verse, um, uh, you know, 33. He knows these things, and, and God reach you where you are. Maybe you don't know how to get to him, but he reached to you where you are. And that's the, the third encounter, the same thing in the boat and in, in the ocean, in the waves. And um, in the storm. And there the storm has a reason. God allowed the storm, has control over it. And any storm in your life is not easy, but... And when, uh, in verse um, 23 here, um, let us go to verse 24, please. And the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary and then Jesus came to them and when Jesus came to them they were so afraid and on the sea they were troubled saying it is God and they cried out for fear but next verse but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying be of good cheer it is I do not be afraid next verse here Peter you know, all of them in the boat, you know. No one wanted to get out from the boat. But Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. You know, I, I really look, uh, think about Peter here. And they were sharing with uh, Jean before the meeting. Um, you know, none of them, they get out from the boat. They were all afraid. The only one who challenged and asked, he wanted to be like Jesus, you know? I think Peter has, or Simon, has a heart of loving like uh, Pastor Jesus. Jesus, you are walking, let me walk like you. Let me walk. I wanted to be like you.
command me to come to you on the water. Next verse, please. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Wonderful. You know, he's like Jesus. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that the story of Simon is the story of Jesus, the story of uh, the one who can transform you and me to be like him. When we go to the um, Acts, we will see step by step, Peter is like Jesus. All the action that Jesus did in, while he is in, in earth, Peter started to do the same thing and even more. Because he loved the Lord. Even at him. Can you trust in the Lord and move? You know, to get into the water means you have to get out from the boat. In order to walk on the water, we must get out from it. Believe in him. That's a step of faith. The Jesus, uh, you know, we all actually pinpoint to Jesus and say, well, you know, what happened to him after that? Next verse, please. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. And he cried out saying, Lord, save me. You see, sometimes we just look at Peter in that situation we he is sinking because he doubt. But them get out from the boat. He's the only one. In order to walk in the water, you have to fix this. Not the storm, not the, not the disciples, not your abilities, but it's the Lord. Jesus is the standard, not someone or not something else. His word, we measure ourselves against from his word. In order to walk in the water when our surrounding try to distract us, we must stay focused on the one who can save us. On the one who called us to walk in the water. The, um, the third encounter that I wanted to go uh, from here to Matthew. Um, I will jump to Matthew 26. Ten and verse um, and verse. 51. When they came to um, and uh, uh, 51, and suddenly one of those who were with Jesus, and in, in John mentioned that he is Simon Peter, stretched out his hand, draw his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. You know, he, he's fast. <laughs> he won it, I, but he was most probably half, you know, he was distracted. He was, uh, you know, half, you know, he was, he was sleeping before that. Then after that, that's what Dr. Uh, what uh, Pastor uh, Oscar mentioned about, about that. About in verse, um, you know, 57 or 58. Peter, after that, okay. But he's the one who actually was in the courtyard at least. And, and we know the story that three times in uh, and three, three different people with three different locations. The one that he, the first encounter where he denied the same place when, where he denied the Lord, the same place he met him in John 21, 
and verse 9. In verse 2, the old, um, old thing that I, I used to do. And he took all the disciples with him. Seven of them, they went with him, laid on it, and bread. He was preparing food for them because they couldn't get even one fish to call. Exactly where you are. Maybe in that place, Jesus. Next verse, please. And Jesus said, bring some of the fish, which you have just caught. And that's actually what Jesus helped them to, to get. Um, but anyway, um, in verse 15, in the same. After, after he fed him, fed them, telling him what? Simon. You know, many times Jesus said, Simon, Simon. Simon, Simon. It's like Rebecca. She said, what's wrong? Why you call me Rebecca? I'm Becky. You know, Simon. You know, just uh, tell him, remember. Remember, Simon, the first time I met you and what? Uh, you're not the sand. Moving, changing, not stable. Simon Peter. And he asked him only one question. Do you love me? He felt that he's a failure. He cannot be. I don't know what you left Jesus for. I don't know what attracted you away from the Lord to the point that you left Jesus or loved the things more than Jesus. Jesus coming to you now asking you questions. Do you love me? I know you love me, but you love me more than these. You love things. The Lord asking you, do you love me more than this? Three times he repeated the same thing. And at the end, Peter said, and verse, that's why he, verse 17, when Jesus asked him, because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. You call me. You know me. You know my weakness. You know my strengths. You know everything about me. Go and lead. Go back and be the leader. Go back to your your love to me and to Acts, I'm going to end here. Acts 2, verse 14. You know, after the Pentecost helper, and when the Holy Spirit in the Pentecost came upon them, they changed. Change the spirit. Are we listening? Are we obeying? the Holy Spirit. But there's something happened on them, and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could, could this mean? Next verse, please. Others mocking said, Peter. Peter stand, you see. You know, and this is God spoke to me firm on the faith, to stand firm for building my church, Stand firm together cross or at the cross. They were struggling before the cross. Going to be, you know, this is what the Lord uh, told Peter. You know, Peter, you know, has two revelation, Peter. You know, revelation that Jesus is the son of the um, living God. And the second when he said that we were going to heed my words. Next verse. For these are. We are not drunk. He didn't say that I'm not, we are not drunk because we are. If you wanted to drink, you will, you know, it's too early to have a drink. Uh, so, uh, you know, his answer is like, you know, <laughs> we are drunk, but that's what it is. 
It is according to, he's talking to the Jewish people, he knows, they know the Old Testament, and he, the book of Joel. Anybody read the book of Joel? I had three chapters. Oh, okay, great. And uh, it's all about hope. The next verse, and he could this, and it shall come to pass in the last days. And this is a word for prophecy. He, he mentioned about what is happening now as he, as that moment of Pentecost, and as well as first coming of the Lord to the earth until the end, until the day that Jesus will come back to reign over the uh, word, those are the last days. And we are in the last days. And say, in the last days, say God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men, and this is the word for each one of us. This is the word of prophecy to all of us, encouragement. You know, in the last days, God wanted to start a revelation, rev uh, revival among the youth, among young men. They will prophesy. The young men shall see visions. You know, uh, Peter, Simon, he received a vision from heaven. No one else received it. And he is spoken here from, from his testimony. He's, he, he was not an old man, by the way. He, he's still young, you know, at that point. Jesus was at that, you know. I, see visions. To see what the Lord has for you. So the Lord can open your eyes so you can see him. And see his glory. As he took Simon and Peter, uh, Simon, Peter and John, and uh, uh, you know, to the mountain of transformation, and give them a glimpse of his glory. Wanted God to give you a vision of his glory that will change people around you. Do you believe in that? Do you believe? God's calling to you. God's calling you. Do you believe that God will want it to change you? God believe in you? See you? Understand? He knows everything about you. And he wanted to transform you like what he did in Peter. This is the story of Peter. This is the story of Jesus. This is the story of every one of us. This is the story of us as we walk with the Lord. He wanted to transform us. Amen? Amen. Um, there will be a, a time of prayer now. I, I'm going to leave time now to Pastor Oscar to pray with us. And in, in the 15 minutes, 20 minutes that is, we have left from the message here, I wanted to um, have the time so we can pray. Just to be honest with you, honest with yourself. God speak to you. This is the word that God have for you.